Welcome to Arizona Clinical Informatics' educational series on Cerner. Lesson number two, Power Chart Basic Overview, part three. We're picking back up where we left off with part two. And as we're going into part three, we are continuing along with our results review M page. The anticoagulant tab would show data documentation and lab results associated with anticoagulants. The diabetic tab shows labs associated with diabetes and also medication documentation that has been completed on the patient. The education tab will pull in any education that was completed on the patient. Notice that you are seeing data we entered on the asthma education power form from earlier. The social history tab highlights documented data on social history, smoker, caffeine intake, and etc. Because this data is usually entered on a day of emission, you will have to adjust the date range to see the results. Let's go back one more time. To Notice the flow sheet and level lines under the tabs. By selecting the down arrow, you have several choices where we can narrow down what recent results we are looking at. For example, let's select quality measures. All but documentations associated with quality measures disappears. And here we have those asthma education documentations again. Let's go back to the default all results flow sheet. Under level, we can narrow down documentation again. Let's select point of care testing. You are now only seeing the point of care testing results. We'll move back to the all result section, which is the default choice. And this takes us back to the original defaults for the recent results tab, which is all results flow sheet and a level of all result section. We finished review of the recent results M page, and now we're moving on to the EMAR M page. EMAR allows you to see the medications that are due or ones that have been given already. See all those red boxes? They are overdue medications. The date time column with the time of 1311 is in yellow. This shows you what the current time that you are assessing the chart is. All columns on this run chronologically, and you'll notice a gray bar with a specific date range. You can adjust this as needed. The column next to the M page panel is presently stating time view, and it allows you to change your view of this EMAR. If you scroll down to the bottom of this column, you'll see a selection called therapeutic class view. By clicking on therapeutic class view, we change our view to look at the therapeutic drug class views of the scheduled medications for the patient. Each present class that has an active medication order in its class will show. Selecting the plus mark next to a class will expand the view on that particular class view. Here we see the cardiovascular agents being expanded out. Now we'll click on the plus mark besides antiarrhythmic agents. Notice under antiarrhythmic agents you see group 5 antiarrhythmics. Let's click on that classification. You'll notice the class of medications has changed to reflect the group 5 antiarrhythmics that are ordered on the patient. Selecting the time view in the column reverts us back to the EMARS default view. The next end page is MAR summary. This selection is a view only screen showing you all scheduled and documentation times for medications. The next end page is medication list. Though the example shown is empty, this would be the space for you to review any medication orders that are active or inactive on the patient. Also, you'll notice three tabs, orders, medication list, and document and the plan. Selecting orders will take you to the orders in page. The next in page is INO INET. This section is where about 80% of all documentation will occur in Cerner Power Chart. For a complete breakdown of documentation in INO INET, please refer to lesson number seven. As a brief introduction though, INET contains bands. These are located in a column to the right of the M page. Each band has several subbands located within it. There is always a default band depending on your location, but these bands are also customizable, especially if you float to different units. 
In the example shown, you are seeing a MedSurge frequent assessment band with vital signs selected. If you look to the right of the columns with the bands, you will see the documentation column. This column works like a spreadsheet. You have detailed lines specific to the data you need to collect. You will have the defaulted current time slot and you can add time slots for documentation as well if you are late on documentation. Clicking on another band, in this instance, incision wound, you will see the detailed line for documentation appear. Selecting the MedSurge frequent assessment band, it will move you back to the data fields for that band. Also within INO INET is an associate monitor icon. This allows certain departments like ICU and PACU to associate their patient monitors with PowerChart, allowing for vitals to cross over from the monitor to Cerner. Our next end page is Histories. This section allows you to review past medical procedures and family histories. Not only can you view, you can plus add items of history as well from this end page. As this is a trained patient, there is no detail to review. Outside records is the next end page. This is a place where you can locate a longitudinal patient record for your patients. If existing from other participating hospitals, clinics, or medical offices, you will see these outside records visible for viewing. There is a separate non-lesson video that is available on nursing functions for the LPR, longitudinal patient records, also known as outside records. The acquired data end page will generate data that has been acquired and added to the current patient account from outside records. Again, this is a trained patient with no data to pull over. The social history end page was already discussed as a results review tab. This is just another shortcut to the patient's social history. You need to remember to adjust the date back to the date of admission to see the entered data. Now we'll move on to the Diagnosis and Problems M page. This M page is utilized to view previously entered diagnoses by physicians or providers and also a place to review, modify, and add problems to a current patient. In this instance, we have a problem of diabetes already present. Let's add another one. Select the plus add button. You'll come across a search field. Let's type in AMI and then select the binoculars icon. A list of matching intelligent medical objects, also known as IMOs, will appear matching the search for AMI. Make sure you select the appropriate AMI selection. In this example, we'll be selecting AMI, acute myocardial infarction. Once selected, it highlights blue and you'll press the OK button. With AMI selected as a problem, you can update the onset date or age if known. You can also update the confirmation of the problem. In this example, patient stated is selected. You can modify the status of the problem by using the drop down arrow. When finished modifying the fit patient, select the OK button. AMI now populates with diabetes under the problem. Note. All patients that arrive in the hospital setting require at least one problem to be entered in on them. In our next end page, we will address allergies. Allergies can be viewed and entered in numerous locations. We saw one example in the blue patient info bar at the top of the screen. On this view, we see the already entered medication allergy of penicillins. The green check mark next to the substance indicates it will generate a drug drug interaction alert if a penicillin derivative. You'll see numerous morphines appear under the search. Select the generic morphine. This will add morphine to the substance tab on the far right hand side of the screen. On the left hand side, under the search bar, the search for has moved from substance to reaction. In the search bar, let's search for rash. After hitting the enter key, we get a large result field of the reaction of rash. We'll scroll down to drug rash and double click on it. 
This will add it to the right column under three reaction symptoms. If there were more than one symptom, you would search and select as many as needed. Now that we've added drug rash, we can click on the drop down next to severity. Here we can select the type of severity of the drug reaction. Let's select the severity of mild. Mild is now entered as a severity. If known, we can add the info source for the reaction. In this instance, patient was chosen as the info source. Patient is now entered as an info source. We now need to select the category for the allergy, as Cerner Power Chart doesn't typically default any categories. Notice the yellow required field by category. Select the drop down arrow and choose drug as morphine is considered a drug allergy. After selecting a category for the allergy and being finished, select the OK button. You will be returned to the allergy end page and now you can see the morphine allergy we added. Note that it too has a green check mark next to it qualifying it for a drug drug interaction check and alert. Let's add one more allergy. Select the plus add button again. You are taking back to the search engine. Now let's enter and select peanuts as a food allergy. Peanuts is added and the search window switches to a reaction search. Prior to searching for that reaction, let's go ahead and enter our required category of food as this is a food allergy. Now let's search for and select the reaction of hives. We can now save the allergy by pressing the OK button. You now see This concludes part three of Power Chart's Basic Overview, Lesson Two.